Thank you, Charlie. Wow. It's different sitting up there with that organ just rocking. And, uh, and to have then Woody Guthrie up here at America's. Oh, sorry. Thanks for telling me. To, uh, to have Woody Guthrie in there sharing an America's favorite song, This Land is Your Land. So welcome to our service at Princeton First United Methodist Church this morning. Those who are joining us live and on live stream, Facebook this morning and later on Facebook and YouTube. As you may have noticed, I am not Pastor Ryan Sutton. I've got more hair and it's a different color. Uh, so he is on vacation, we'll be back tomorrow. I, if you don't know me, I'm Marsha Petticord, and I'm a certified lay minister here at First United Methodist Church of Princeton, where I also work. I'd like to share a couple of announcements with you uh, this morning. Uh, the adult Sunday school class that meets in the library on Sundays is not meeting today, and there's no nursery today or children's Sunday school. Uh, both will resume next week. You should have received your Thanksgiving letter this week. We are trying something new this year, first time that I remember. Uh, due to the devastating effects of COVID this year throughout our nation and our community, whether by actually becoming ill with a disease or suffering and becoming a victim of COVID restrictions, businesses are suffering this year and people are suffering. So the Finance Committee decided in our meeting a few weeks ago that we wanted to donate what we would be receiving in our Thanksgiving offering to the Bureau County Food Pantry so that they could provide food for those who need it. So if you would, once you receive your, your envelope, if you would please mail it in, bring it in, or drop it off in the white lock box at the entry so that we can help the food pantry with their Thanksgiving. Our table will be meeting this week on Tuesday at 5 p.m. to prepare for the next distribution um, this week of food cards. SPRC will be meeting also via Zoom at 5.45 p.m. On Wednesday at 7 p.m., the choir will meet via Zoom and record our next song, which you will see next Sunday. That is just a hoot and a half. If you ever get a chance to do that, that's so much fun. And, uh, and I, I, I hope you will join us. It's a different process, but it's a lot of fun. Um, Princeton Ministerial Association will be meeting at Thursday at noon via Zoom this week. Youth groups will meet on Thursday at 1.30 for the junior high and 7 p.m. for the senior high. And Saturday, November 14th, is at 10 a.m., is uh, we will have seven of us from this church who will be represented in attending the virtual Northern Illinois Annual Conference, which usually comes in June every year. This year, uh, we had to switch gears. Uh, last week, we were given training, and this week also to know how to vote and understand the budget and, uh, and take us through the technical difficulties. Uh, it's very interesting, and uh, so Saturday we will be doing that um, and, and being a part of our annual conference to vote and to, uh, to be a part of, of the Methodist Church Worldwide. Our music today is in honor of the upcoming Veterans Day. I think it's on Thursday, isn't it? Uh, Wednesday or Thursday. Um, so it's, um, it's something that we will be pausing to honor our veterans. And uh, as you can see, we've already started in the music that Charlie is, um, is playing for us. Now, if you would please join me in the focusing prayer. Please pray with me. Most amazing God, ruler of our world, help us this day as we come before you. We have not honored you this week with our actions. Teach us again to meet the day with love, grace, and a healing spirit as we worship you so that our nation and our community can, be give, can begin to forgive and move ahead. We ask this in your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, uh, if you would, oh, okay, I was looking for him. Uh, Frank will join you in the, uh, the call to worship. Oops, I gotta take that with me. Gotta take my friend. 
If you're able, would you please stand and join in the call to worship? <clears throat> Despite these difficult and trying times, we gather in worship of God. Break out in joyous celebration because of what the Lord has done. Worship in mercy. God calls us to work for justice for all and to provide compassion to everyone. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and hear the Lord's word of promise to you. You are loved. Now before Charlie plays his next song, the Armed Services Medley, I would ask you to sit and then at the point where you or a family member has been involved with a branch of service, I ask you to stand or raise your hand uh, during that song. So Charlie, thank you. Uh, now is the time for our stewardship moment, and we are just beginning our stewardship campaign today. Uh, Frank Cabral, who is chair of our finance committee, uh, has been the one who's been chosen to, uh, to talk about our finance uh, stewardship campaign this year. So, Frank. Good morning. Everybody hear me okay? Okay, good. You took my thunder away. Sorry. Everybody knows that when the finance guy stands into the pulpit, we're going to talk about football, right? <laughs> <laughs> Another good morning to you. Uh, our stewardship program has started its beginning, and our theme this year is something new. And this has been a challenging year, as we all know. Next year, it's still uncertain of what's going to happen. 
I'm sure we're still going to have challenges, maybe the same ones, maybe someone's different, maybe not. But I do want to say to you that we th the finance portion of your church thanks you for your generosity in both your financial support and your support in time. Financially, we look good this year, despite all the challenges that we have survived with the God's guidance and your generous support these challenges. All of our obligations will be paid this year, including our apportionments. Now your giving provides the funds for the church to spread God's word and his works. It's been a little restricted this year because of the virus, but we still have had some that have gone on and we're working hard to get more to go. So we thank you very much for this. Your support is always, always gratifying. You will be receiving your pledge cards in the mail very shortly. And as a finance, we, th we really want you to look at that, pray for it, and I know that you as a family, these challenges affect you probably even more than they affect the church. So we understand what's happening, we understand what's going on, but still, in all the years that I have been affiliated with this church, and I've been affiliated with it for a long time, and I have been finance chairman several times, God has blessed this church because no matter what challenges face us, no matter what hardships we have, we always come out on top. And that has got all to do with what your support has done and what your, your generosity really is what makes this thing. But I want you to know that your support is really well managed. Finance looks at this. We look for ways to save. i just give you an example, something you probably haven't even noticed in this church. Finance and trustees, trustees mostly who worked on a program with the city, changed the lighting. The lighting in the church has been changed. We have received some uh, grants and so forth from the city. But it's going to save us a lot of money over the years, year after year after year, because this lighting is much more efficient and it's much, much less costly as far as electricity is concerned. This is just an example of one of the things that we have been doing as a finance team. So again, we thank you and thank you and thank you for what you have done. And we need your continuous support for next year and pray to God that the challenges that we have faced this year will finally slowly disappear. Again, thank you and may God guide you and look after you and this church. Amen. Frank, do we have the uh, logo theme for the finance? Uh, oh, yeah, our theme this year is, is going to be something new. Uh, <laughs> something new is not always bad. <laughs> so you can look forward to, to, to some things that will be coming out in the future to what new things we're going to, going to plan. Okay? Thank you very much. Um, when I lived in Washington State, uh, the hand, uh, every year at Thanksgiving time, our church choir sang this song, Simple Gifts. And so it's, it was really a joy to me to see what they were singing this time. So handbells.
Thanks, Bill Choir. You know, I really tried to convince Rufus to do the children's moment with me this time. But I think, you know, the pastor was afraid that I would be a bad influence on Rufus. And teaching bad habits, I, I, I don't understand where he might have gotten that. I mean, you would think I would be feeding him too many bananas. I mean, I, I don't know, it's 25 bananas a day too much or not, not enough. So anyway, we have a substitute. Um, the cabinet has provided us a worship service um, for our conference, and we're using part of it this week. And this is a very cool children's choir singing, Behold, Behold. their hearts. <laughs> How could you not love that? Um, so Frank will be reading our first scripture reading. The scripture reading today is from Psalm 78 verses 1 through 7. Give ear, all my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings for, from the old, things that we have heard and known that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell them to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might, the wonders that he has done. He established a decree in Jacob and appointed the law in Israel. Which, which he commanded our ancestors to teach to their children. That the generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and rise up and tell them to the children, so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Amen. Amen. If you would rise, um, if you are able, for the, uh, the gospel reading. Matthew 25, 1 to 13. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, look, here comes the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, 
I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. You may be seated. So as I mentioned, with Pastor being on vacation this week, he decided to use a message uh, from our conference uh, and our bishop. This is probably one of the last times we're going to see our bishop because she will be retiring in about six weeks. So please listen as she presents her message. No, I'm not in Africa. But I want to tell you a story about your giving over the years that you might not be aware of so as to encourage you to continue to give generously to our church. I also think it's a story that reminds us about the strength of being the United Methodist Church. In the uncertainty of our denomination, we sometimes forget why we're church. Remember, why church is our annual conference theme for this year. During my years as a bishop, now over 16, one of the most exciting and energizing global mission projects that I've been a part of was Imagine No Malaria. Imagine No Malaria, as its impact has evolved over the years, is a great example of what a church like ours, the United Methodist Church, can do. Not just today or this year, but over the decades of faithful giving. The reason that we're involved in helping to eliminate deaths by malaria with our United Nations Foundation partners is because they came to us. They were looking for a way to deliver nets to people in rural Africa. They had money from people like Bill and Melinda Gates and even an initial fundraising for nets by Rick Riley at Sports Illustrated. But they didn't have a delivery system. They had been to Africa and everywhere they wanted to be able to deliver nets and medicine and education, they found United Methodist churches, clinics, hospitals, and schools. As they said, wherever the road ended, beyond the end of the road, were still the United Methodists. So they called us up. They asked us to partner with them because for decades, United Methodists like you had been giving to mission. Much of it through apportionment dollars, but also other mission gifts and going on mission trips that built some of these churches and clinics and hospitals and schools. But imagine no malaria did more than just deliver nets. We trained thousands of local people as health workers. They were people from the communities themselves where the nets and medicine and education were needed. With them, communication systems were also developed to educate about malaria and its prevention. This became a comprehensive, state-of-the-art method to eliminate deaths by malaria. This worked because people trusted their own people to educate them about malaria and the use of nets. So we had a very successful retention rate in the use of those nets. When we completed the fundraising effort in 2016, we had raised almost $70 million for the prevention of malaria in Africa. That was wonderful. But we soon realized that its value was greater yet. In 2013 and 14, the Ebola crisis had begun in West Africa. Because local healthcare workers were trained around Imagine No Malaria goals, trusted people were able to apply some of these same skills and knowledge to the prevention of Ebola. Because communications and technology systems were put in place through the Imagine No Malaria effort, Every day during the Ebola crisis, two messages would go out to people in each West African country. The message in the morning was one of education, reminding people of what they needed to do in order to prevent disease and its spread. The one in the evening was a message of hope and inspiration in the midst of a very difficult challenge. Now COVID-19 has hit Africa very hard. And they are without a lot of medical technology to address its effects. But because they have developed healthcare workers, communication and technology systems, the church there is able to address 
some of the same needs in terms of helping people be educated in order to prevent COVID as much as any of us are. Your generous giving to apportionments, specifically world service, as well as specific fundraisings like we did a few years ago in Northern Illinois by raising a million dollars towards Imagine No Malaria is like an investment that keeps growing in its mission to help others. When you give to United Methodist Committee on Relief, for instance, any disaster, you know that 100% goes toward that relief. But it takes apportionments themselves to provide the delivery system. Like you need trucks to deliver food, you need apportionments to deliver help and hope in the form of medicine, in the form of training, in the form of persons and missionaries. Apportionments are quite literally an essential delivery system of hope for many people. I could list a lot of examples like this, but another one that comes to mind is our reputation around the world to provide well-trained, certified, and well-respected chaplains in all kinds of institutions, including the military. The funny thing about United Methodists is that we don't know or appreciate who we are and what we do as much as other people do. Any individual church in Northern Illinois may not be the biggest church, but you're part of a very big church. We're a church of 11 million people throughout the world, and we can do far more than even we can imagine when we work together to see Jesus in every person, as the scripture says. God bless you in your years and continued efforts of generosity to deliver help and hope around the world. Now you might tease uh, Pastor Ryan a little bit next week when you can say, well, the bishop spoke at our church and she was short. <laughs> uh, Beth has a, a song uh, chosen for the next one, and I've always liked this song because it just shows so much inclusiveness and the way God wants us to act toward each other.
We have many to mention uh, as we look our per on our prayer concern list this week. Um, we have a lot of very conscientious people in our church and we really appreciate the fact that um, some of the people on the list that we have have self-quarantined before they're even tested for COVID and have not been to church in several weeks when they are tested negatively or positively. Uh, some of them that are on this list don't even attend this church, but we invite you all to be cautious and stay safe. We ask for prayers for the Atkinsons who are improving at this time in the Bush family for whom Josh has tested positive. Um, Pat and Gary James, Pat this week tested positive for COVID and Gary has some health issues. Uh, he's been tested, but he hasn't received the results yet. For my own daughter-in-law, Beth Petticord, who had a very bad stroke last Saturday, but is improving and should be soon going to a rehab facility where fortunately this is in Washington state where they can actually have visitors. So that's a big plus. Uh, for Mike Verana, who is in Peoria now uh, being treated for COVID, for the Abby Brown family who are friends of Sue Fellhofer with health issues and one other unspoken health concern. We also ask for prayers for Nancy and Paul Kautz for ongoing health concerns. Rita Dunlap has asked for prayers for her granddaughter, Maddie Ellis, with COVID. For Chris Rosinski, who are waiting for results of a COVID test. And prayers for Jean, who went through testing uh, last week and is awaiting results of that. Prayers also for Agnes Dunn. Uh, Carla Town is having a procedure on Tuesday, and we have prayers for her. Um, but we have a, a special joy and thank you of the Kellys, Kelly McCune and Kelly Pelham, who have been invaluable in helping us through this time of, uh, of having our AV audiovisual uh, helping out with that. And um, so Ke Kelly... McCune has actually come here early in the morning before she goes to her own churches and, uh, and helped us get set up. So we really, really appreciate those who have stepped up to fill in the gaps uh, that are needed. So I ask you to please pray with me. My most precious God who controls our universe yet is not too great to bend his ear to us. We ask that you hold those who are hurting in your warm and loving arms so that they may feel comfortable and safe, even in their disease. Be with those who are waiting in frustration for a diagnosis. Calm their anxieties, lessen their fears so that they hear your calm voice filled with love, reassuring them that God will be with them always. And loving God, be with those who are working on a vaccine which will work effectively against this coronavirus. Strengthen their minds, instill in them the dedication to find a vaccine, a cure, or a way to make this virus harmless. Dearest Lord, it is not only our anxiety of this coronavirus, but we have spent this year filled with anxiety and controversy over the election. May you enable us now to heal, to begin to love again, to begin to forgive. Fill our hearts with love, grace, tolerance, humility, and integrity. Make peace with our neighbors, not just one party, but all parties, politicians, public figures, and voters. This is our homeland. We must work together to continue to make it a great nation. And bless our upcoming conference, annual conference, the retirement of our Bishop Sally Dick, the incoming Bishop John Hopkins. We thank you for the dedicated leadership of Bishop Sally as she has led this conference through some of the toughest years we have experienced. Amazing God, 
We honor the brave men who serve this country in the armed forces, some being injured during their time of service. We praise you for your bravery, for your courage to step up and be a part of keeping this nation safe. No matter what branch of service, you did your part on land, sea, or air to protect this nation. We pray for the beautiful weather we've been having, just miraculous weather that allows us to be out and connecting with each other in every way we can. We pray for all these things and for those in which your own hearts are praying as we speak the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, pre-COVID, we usually take up an offering. However, our restrictions don't allow us to do that. But just know that, as Frank said, we appreciate every offering that you give, knowing that God will use your offering to help us use these funds toward worthwhile and effective ministry. So after we pray, uh, we will listen to Charlie play the doxology. Please pray with me the offering prayer. Precious Lord, Bless the funds that are given to our church today so that we may use them to praise your name and do the work of the church. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, you may be seated. Beth and Charlie have brought together four patriotic songs for your listening pleasure. <laughs> she will be singing and uh, also Cheryl, Noel, and I. And, uh, and you may be listening or possibly singing in your heart. Thank you, Beth. And <laughs>
into this crazy world and look for chances to spread the love of Jesus to everyone you meet. Let Jesus shine out of you so bright that people are drawn to that light so that they may become his followers also. God bless you all. We'll start over here this time.